Happy Halloween, everybody. Today, we were talking about the scariest things that are happening in real estate right now. I actually have some clips I'm going to be sharing with you today. And um, before we get started, I do want to let everybody know that I have just launched my new website. It's christinasmallhorn.com. So you're, if you're interested in finding a real estate agent in your area and you're having a hard time finding a real estate agent in your area, just go to my website, christinasmallhorn.com and click on on get a referral. And then I will personally contact you and set you up with a real estate agent throughout the country. I have no many, many, many. I have a real estate group with over 5,000 agents throughout the country that are, I personally know that, um, that like we all talk about YouTube, a lot of them do have YouTube channels. So if you are interested in that, again, it's christinasmallhorn.com. Okay. And then, then on the top of it all, so, so we're talking about the scary stuff that's been happening in real estate right now. So Eddie, my husband, who is also the producer, has an article for us. But before we get into that, we have a special guest. And you guys might remember him. It's Will Friedner. He's from Montana. And he, hey there, Will. Hello. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> everybody's liking the costume. Yeah. <laughs> what are you uh, dressed as today, Will? <laughs> I'm dressed as an old real estate guy that does YouTube. <laughs> well, I'm an old real estate gal that does YouTube. <laughs> I, I Halloween is going to be starting like right after this live stream is done. So I wanted to get my makeup on first. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do the live stream like this. Nobody's going to care. You know, it's Halloween. What, what, what can you do? <laughs> It has a little thing, but this is annoying. You know, I, was, I like, I, I can't, I, I mean, the audience let me know, should I leave this down to, or should I like show so I can show my face? This thing is kind of annoying me, but anyways, <laughs> Eddie, you did find a um, article that we wanted to discuss a little bit here it, and Eddie will pull it up. It's um, out of Arizona um, and it's talking about um Oops, he's. I think he's still searching for it. He has it. It's, oh, he said he does have it. It's a paywall. I don't know if you guys can hear him in the background. Eddie's Eddie is the producer who's also my husband. He's in the other room running the the chat. He's the he's the one that pulls up the questions. So a lot of times when you see the question on the screen, it's not because I'm clicking. It's because Eddie, the magnificent producer, also the stunning husband of mine, pulls them up for me. <laughs> Well, anyways, what the article said, if Eddie can't pull it up, is that in Arizona, they showed that 96%, 96, oh, 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 were you, no, oops, <laughs> poor Eddie, 96% um, of the people, uh, of the houses that were bought by Zillow took a loss, took a loss. They purchased them too high and they sold them lower than what they purchased them for. And uh, here it is. Zillow zeal uh, to outbid for homes backfires from a flipping fumble. Yeah. And I don't think this is necessary. I think they're honestly, they're trying to change the narrative that Zillow is this bad guy. Now they're trying to make it look like they've made a poor business decision and that they're not really trying to take over the real estate market by purchasing affordable houses for people. Um, that's my opinion. Because when you look at it, this is a halt. Uh, they're just, all they're saying is they're pausing their uh they're pausing their uh, program. It said it ended up with so many winning bids that it stopped making new offers on properties. Now, after buying more homes in the third quarter than ever before, the company is working through a backlog of houses that need to be fixed up and sold while facing unpleasant reality. Slow, uh, slowing price appreciation means that will, many uh, homes will sell at a loss. Zillow put a record number of homes on the market in September, listing properties at the lowest markup since 2018, according to research from Yippity Data. <laughs> That's a cool name. It also cut prices on nearly uh, half of its U.S. listings in the third quarter, according to Yip Yippit. Uh, signaling its inventory was commanding prices lower than expected. So. What do you think, Will? What, it, what what's your what's your well, take on the, the Zillow thing? I didn't read that exact article, but I read one similar. And what what made me laugh hard and loud was in the article that I read. It said that Zillow was using their own algorithm to figure out these prices, aka the Zestimate. Mm -hmm. So that just proves that 
that Zestimate is such garbage and now it burned them. So I, I, this makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. It, well, they, anybody that knows that the, the algorithm for this estimate is like this. So they take your house and they just basically draw a circle, a circumference around it. Any property that has sold in that area, any property, whether it's a manufactured home or a million dollar home, they use that as mm -hmm. one of their comps for your house. doesn't matter about the square footage or anything. It's just basically an average price. In some cases, it works against you. In some cases, it works for you. But if flat says on the website, because they've been sued several times about this, that it's just basically a guesstimate. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what your house is worth and that you need to have a professional appraiser appraise the property. Now, if that's what they were using to buy up these homes, then they made a bad decision. And I and I've heard other I've actually heard real estate agents sell their house to Zillow because they were like, I'm not going to get this much from this. <laughs> like this is ridiculous. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. And so um now I don't know if you've uh, I don't know if Eddie can pull this article out because it just made me think of this. Now, did you hear that appraisers are now going to be able to do desktop appraisals, which a desktop appraisal is basically what I'm saying right here, just a computer algorithm saying how much the house is worth and they can just do it from there instead of going to the house and actually figuring out the, the house's property value. Um, did, did you see that? I have not seen that, but um, even with that, and I, I don't necessarily agree with it, but even with that, I'm guessing that appraisers will be a little more thorough and make it a little more accurate than those estimates because those are just, and this has been, I've been railing about this on my channel ever since I started that my biggest pet peeve with Zillow is, is that estimate because everybody looks at their website and they think, oh, well, this is Zillow. They know everything. And then uh, the, you know, those estimates right there front and center. So people take it like it's gospel mm -hmm. and it kills you. If you're, if you list your house with yourself or me and I say, well, it's worth 500,000. And then Zillow comes in and says it's worth 450. Everybody that makes an offer is going to come off of that, you know, and they're going to think, well, why are you charging so much? Zillow says it's worth this. Well, I know that in some markets, you know, like just to offset that some of the sellers have already gotten a pre-appraisal saying this is what the appraisers already said, you know, so that way it's like it's in concrete paper much better than a Zillow as estimate. I do want to uh, put this up here real quick. VCG Construction with the 1999 Super Chat said, question, what's up, witch? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're just talking about the real estate market. That's it. Just, just feeling a little green in the gills today. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still think that these, uh, the idea of uh, what they call a desktop appraisal, which would be very similar to the Zillow's estimate, um, the lenders doing this, I think this is a bad decision on their end. And I think there are going to be some major repercussions that happen because of it. Um, I don't even like uh, if I was a homeowner and I paid five hundred dollars for a um, an appraisal and I've just found out that they just went and went on computer algorithm and and just decided how much the value of my home was. I would be very upset with that and not, I would demand, <laughs> yeah, demand that they go out there and do there. So Eddie found one desktop appraisals, everything you need to know. So I don't know when they're exactly starting this, but they, a lot of lenders, big institutions are saying that they're definitely going to be doing this. Um, Eddie found a little article. If you're involved in a real estate industry in any way, you may have seen or heard about them by now. Uh, they qu uh, provide a quick estimate of the property without a hefty price tag. Homeowners, brokers, lenders, developers, investors, and use them all. And they're not, uh, and they aren't, restricted appraisal reports. So what am I talking about? Desktop appraisals. <laughs> look at, look at VCG construction, giving us another 1999 super chat with the happy Halloween. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Happy Halloween to you and your Mrs. VCG. So, yeah. I think, well, I think those are, those are <clears throat> as soon as say bank of America or whoever, you know, what large bank is going to use these, as soon as they get burned a few times like Zillow, I bet that'll be a thing of the past as well. Yeah, you know, it always takes a little bit of time, about <laughs> six to nine months. And they're like, you know what? Maybe that desktop appraisal thing wasn't really <laughs> necessarily a good idea. We only lost $2.4 billion. It's weird. You know? We're losing money. We don't know why. We don't know why that didn't work. <laughs> we didn't listen to the realtors, but, you know, whatever. 
Yeah. <laughs> All right, Eddie, we got some questions that are rolling in. So go ahead and throw the first question up if you could, please, my friend. Happy Halloween, everybody, by the way, while Eddie's finding that. I'm having a little fun. I know one I'm a little us, old for doing Halloween, but for Halloween. I love Halloween. <laughs> Oh, Christina, I said, uh, I said, I concur. Happy Halloween. Howdy with a witchy afternoon. <laughs> uh, I thought the Wicked Witch of the West was dead. Yeah, well, <laughs> she's back. <laughs> now she's in the East. <laughs> yeah. Question. I'm Central, actually. Central. Uh, I'm the Wicked Witch of the Central, Central America, Central part of the United States. Question. Why do states ha have standard rules for selling houses? Alabama doesn't need to provide dis uh, disclosure to sellers. I was under contract and found out uh, there was 60 easement through the property. So every state is going to have a different set of laws when it comes to real estate and what sellers need to provide. Like in some states, I'm going to give you, for instance, since we're talking about Halloween, you have to tell them if you think the house is haunted. Like it has to be in the seller's disclosure if you know that if you believe that the house is haunted. That is not a thing here in Louisiana. I believe I, I forget there's like two or three states that require you to disclose that. It's just one of those things because it would be too difficult to monitor a nationwide real estate transaction. Um, this keeps it very localized and in within the state. So that way they can monitor real estate agents in that specific state and they can follow along with the line of the laws that are in for that specific land because everybody, everybody's pieces of property are going to be completely different. Like we flood like nobody's business. We're under sea level. That's going to be a totally different terrain than let's just say Texas or even Alabama. So they have to have different rules and laws. Um, now you can always um, fight those laws. You know, like if there's, if you're like upset that they didn't provide that kind of information, everything you can, you can try to fight and, and make a petition to make some of those changes and cause a big stink, get a hold of the newspaper and say, you know, they should be providing this for homeowners and, and, and people that are selling their house. What do you have to say, Mr. Will about that? Well, I think the, the big thing um, is that just wherever you are in the U S make sure you ask your agent these questions because Unfortunately, there's a lot of agents that won't answer or don't even know the answer to it. So, um, you know, I've, I've never understood that you're buying the biggest, more than likely the biggest purchase you're ever going to make. And, you know, you're leaving it up to sometimes people that have been in the business for five minutes that don't know, don't know these laws and don't know what they have to disclose or what they should disclose. And then guess who gets burned? Yeah. Well, now I will say yeah. that if your um, real estate agent is inexperienced, it doesn't hurt to ask for another senior seasoned agent to help along. Like say you really like this real estate agent, they're new in the business. You feel like they're not really necessarily answering all your questions. You can ask them like, Hey, can you get a hold of your broker to ask this question? Cause I don't really, I'm not really satisfied with the answer. Not nothing against you, but I really want to be make sure and ask to speak to their broker or ask to see, speak to somebody that's a more senior real estate agent in that specific office. So that way you can get your answer uh, answers to your questions um, on any home, because you should be able to know like where the setback is for a piece of property when you're setting down a house or what kind of septic system if you need, or if you can tie into a, a local sewage city water and all, all that. So yeah, there doesn't hurt to ask for somebody else if things aren't are going south. That's for sure. Well, I've um, got a good Halloween story if you're up for it. Yeah, I think everybody's up for a little good. It what do you guys right what, in, what do you guys right think? Real estate and Halloween. Um <laughs> here in Montana, you don't have to disclose that uh there's been a murder or there's a ghost or anything you you don't have to disclose that you only have to disclose if there was a death in the house if it was caused by the house like if you leaned up against a railing and fell off the balcony and died or something like that but if there's been a murder in the house you don't have to disclose it so with that being said a few years ago i was selling a house to an older gal and um she had just lost her husband and it was you know she was downsizing. And so we go look at this house um, in, in this town south of here. And as we're looking at it, I, you know, I noticed that there was new carpet in the master bedroom. And I thought, well, whatever. I mean, that's not that odd. But mm -hmm. um, so then 
I, I came home and um, the, the listing agent never said a word about anything. Uh, I came back and, you know, like the week before closing, I just Google searched the house. And sure enough, there had been a, a murder suicide in the master bedroom. That's <laughs> why there's the new carpet. And I, so I called the other agent and I was like, what do you do? Why? And she goes, well, Will, you know that we don't have to disclose that. I said, I, yes, I do know that, but come on, be, be a human. Yeah. And, you know, so then I called the lady and I was like, here's the deal. I have to tell you this. And um, so, yeah, it was a, it was a bad deal. And so I don't, I don't necessarily agree, agree with that law. And I'm not sure why that is a law here, but that's the law in Montana. Oh, yeah. Well, here in Louisiana, you do not have to disclose if the house is haunted, but they're down in like near the French Quarter. A lot of the houses want to be uh, considered a haunted house, but there's a whole like there's a haunted house like association in order to be uh, like tagged as a haunted house. And then there's a haunted house like tour that lets you know, like who's haunting the house, you know, like what ghosts or spirits are in that area. And they do these whole tours, but it's like, you can't just say my house is haunted. You have to like file with the registry and they have to do this whole thing because they want to be considered haunted. So Eddie, um, can you pull up that thing about the, um, that TikTok about the termites? First time here. Thanks for doing this. Thank you for showing up to the stream. We, we do this every Sunday around usually at 3 30. We're doing it a little bit early today because of Halloween and the kids and the candy. I'm just excited that uh, we can get back to a little taste of normalcy again. I was like, I was excited to do Halloween this year. Wasn't so excited last year. I kind of I bailed out on that one. Uh, let's see here. All right. So uh, I don't know how good it's going to come up if we can hear the sound. Here we go. Eddie's going to try to pull it up here. Y'all, this uh, is some of the worst termite damage I've ever seen in my life. These are all tubes. There's tubes here. There's tubes there. There's probably, I counted over 100 tubes around this foundation. But look at this. Sill plate. Gone. <sighs> Band board. Banjo is just completely gone. Trash. This uh, floor joist is just gone. This is not good. This is the main oh. girder. This thing right here. This is the main support. And look at these tubes. Look at this. Watch this. Boom. <laughs> All right. You can pause that real quick, Eddie. So in the next clip, he, well, at the end of this clip, he explains the fact that this house was, uh, had an inspection. The new homeowners thought there was something wrong with the house because they were having all sorts of problems. He's like, there's no way that they couldn't have known that this was a problem. So Eddie, pull up the next one. This is what happens next. This is, this is crazy to me that this was an actual thing that happened with a real estate agent. He's going to pull up the next link in just a second. But um, like new homeowners, they got an inspection. They did the right thing. They purchased the house because the inspection didn't look like it had a lot of things on it. And so this is what happens next. He's going to pull this out a little louder here. Da -da 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 -da. Here we go. He's got to turn Story it time. Up. So that was a reinspection um, after they had bought the house. So uh, they had an inspection before they bought it. And apparently that inspection report had none of that shit on it. And they moved in and started having a bunch of problems. So they called me out to double check things. Now, they had a copy of the report that they received there. And I was looking through it just to see. And there was like nothing on it. It was bad. Like there was hundreds of items that were missed. It was awful. So and there's a lawyer there because apparently lawsuits are coming. So we're standing there talking. And uh, the lawyer gets a phone call from the other inspector that did the initial inspection. And he's like, what the fudge are you talking about? That stuff is definitely on my report here. And he sent an original copy that tells you when it was last modified. And it was the day of the inspection. And it had everything that I had found on it. It was a really good report, actually. What happened was the agent advised them to do everything through her. So the inspector sent his report to the real estate agent. And somewhere between there and them, they got a half ass report with about 80% of the shit removed. All right, pause. That's so, Eddie. So the real estate agent that was working for them gets the report 
in her email and she edits it out so it doesn't show that the house needs work and it has tons of termite damage that buyer has so much cha-ching lawyer money that they're going to be getting a lot of that back what in the actual heck are they i mean what were they thinking why would any real estate agent do this? now that right there is scary my friend but go ahead will give your piece and i'm gonna give my little piece oh, I, I mean that you know you can distill that down to one word and that's greed the mm -hmm. the agent wanted to get paid and didn't care and knew that if they you know she presented the whole inspection that they would walk away as they should have um and so yeah i hope you know i would love to know the the follow-up and see how much those people won in court <laughs> Absolutely. But if you want to like make sure that something like this doesn't happen to you, you hire your inspector and you make sure that that report from the inspector is it goes to your email box, not to the real estate agent's mm -hmm. box. It goes to you first and then you can send it to your real estate agent or have the inspector email the real estate agent a copy that you've already received from the original inspector like that should have never ever happened and my inspectors don't do that like i get a copy and then the the um then the buyers get a copy and they don't even realize i have a copy and then they send me a copy again you know? yeah, <laughs> so, same, same here i i don't understand i wonder where that was because um here you know the 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 buyer is paying the inspector he's working for them not me Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I do get a copy of it, but I don't, I mean, if I were to change it up and cut pages out, the clients would know because they have the original. I, I can't even, I mean, the whole editing process of doing that alone. I just, I mean, I don't even have time for that. I just literally send it over. Like I would never even, that, that thought process would never even enter my, um, uh, like there's so much fraud involved with that. First of all, that's, that's tampering with, uh, you know, like with a report, she's probably whoever it is, she or she is going to probably lose their license because I mean, that's goes against our code of ethics. You can't do stuff like that. Good Lord. Anyways, I just, that was my scary story. I wanted to share with you. I saw that on the old ticky talkies, I saw that on the old ticky talkies. And I was like, Oh, that's a scary story for Sunday. I want to share. <laughs> what is the uh, scariest thing you've ever seen while you were um, being a, a rural tour? Uh, well, I mean, I, the story I just told earlier was was one. And I did have a haunted one that, I mean, it, it was a bank-owned house. And I had done, you know, um, I had worked with the people. We did cash for keys, all of that. I don't know if you did any of the foreclosures back in mm -hmm. the day. Um, but the bank offers cash for keys. So I went out there and and then you just have to make sure that when they moved out that they didn't trash the place. So mm -hmm. I went out and met with the guy and and I was just walking around and I said, is there anything, you know, obviously we're going to sell it and I'm going to be the listing agent. Is there anything that I should know about this? And he's like, oh, it's haunted. <laughs> oh, great. And uh, apparently there was an old lady that used to live there and supposedly the neighbors had seen her out in the yard at night and you know the the wife had supposedly seen her in the house and um so again i know i wasn't supposed to disclose that but i always told every agent here's what i heard you do it do it rumor what has want, it and, yeah rumor has it that's haunted yeah. so, i've gotten the heebie-jeebies gotten into like, walking into some new houses like something just doesn't feel right like ooh, i don't know and i and they even had one that was on a new construction a new construction. I was like, this is a brand new construction. I should not feel this uncomfortable in this house, but that I, I, I never wanted to go there. And every time they were like, Oh, we need to do another uh, walkthrough or we need to go out there and do another, um, uh, you know, like the Sunday, um, what are those things? I, I never do them. You know, like on Sunday, open they always house. have the uh, open house. That was it. Christina, you want to do an open house? And I was a new agent at the time. I'm like, not at that house, <laughs> any other house, not that house. They're like, it's brand new. It's not haunted. I'm like that, that there's something wrong with that house. There's they built it on top of a graveyard or some, there was something going on there. Cause it definitely made me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I have had uh, some um, people in the house that I wasn't expecting, you know, there, there were, and they weren't expecting me either. That was pretty frightening. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you live on in Montana, my friend? I live up in the northwest corner, and uh, I'm in the town of Whitefish, but we're about 20 miles from the 
uh, Glacier National Park um, mm -hmm. in about 60 miles south of Canada. I, I'm going to see if we have any questions that have come up. Eddie, do we have any questions? Yes. Okay, Eddie's got a question. Question. Uh, okay, not a question. I just wanted to share that we're getting our first home. Congratulations. We made an offer, they uh, countered, and we're accepting. That is the most exciting feeling in the whole entire world. Now that's when the fun begins. And uh, like you have to go through that whole appraisal process. You got to go through the inspection period. Um, I, I want to know if you... Uh, like in your area, are they still doing, um, like, are you still doing inspections where the sellers were fixed things? Because there for a period of time, people were doing inspections, but it was for the, the knowledge of the buyer alone, but it wasn't meaning that the seller was, I mean, the seller was going to have to fix anything, but it seems to me now that the, it has cooled off a little bit. Sellers are a little, a little bit more realistic than they were like, you know, four or five months ago. Yeah. Is that how it is in your area? Will? Yep. Um, you know, when you do the inspection here, I'm sure it's the same down there. Uh, you can call out whatever you want that they found and, and either say, I want it fixed or I want $10,000 off or whatever you mm -hmm. want to do. And at that point, the buyer or the seller can say, okay, I'll fix it or no, or, you know, yeah, we'll give you a credit. So mm -hmm. yeah, it just depends what they find Whether in any market. If it's bad enough, people are going to call it out. <laughs> lawnmower longtime subscriber says i really need to see wicked to find out what really happened to effa alpha 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 you're asking a dys dyslexic girl to say something i don't even i i don't know how to say that name <laughs> forget me I, I, i'm terrible like i'm i'm i I don't know how many times I try to like say things and I'm like, I know I sound so stupid right now, but I just, I can't, my brain can't wrap my head around some words. Question is, are there pole barns being viewed in current housing markets? Anything from resale to va uh, resale to value are lenders or brokers interested in funding them? Uh, they seem to be very popular lately. Pole barns. Are you talking about like a, a barn dominium? They're super popular in, um, in Texas, you know, they, and the reason people want to do them in Texas is because it's a, it's a property tax uh, credit you get because they consider agricultural property when you do that. So yeah, um, they're, they're popular there. They're not extremely popular here. What we consider barn dominium here in Louisiana is a metal building. They're not really like a barn per se. CC Moon says, happy Halloween. Love the costume. Thank you so much. I'm feeling a little witchy today. <laughs> I'm feeling a little witchy. Question. I'm hearing the beginning of 22 prices will go down more. Your thoughts. What are your thoughts, Will? Well, I'm, I, my thoughts are probably skewed from most of the country. I don't think our prices here are going to go down. We're such a, uh, uh, wanted place right now. People wanting to get out of the cities, wanting to live in the mountains. Um, I think our prices may level off a little bit, but I don't, I don't foresee them going down at all. Um, I mean, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but you know, we're, there's such a demand here. Um, I, I don't foresee that happening. I think that um, we're going to see a flattening of a lot of markets um, a lot because there were some that went so high, like Austin, Texas. And, I mean, the, like there's lots of little cities around Texas that went like ridiculously high. So we're going to see a, definitely a leveling off. I think there's also going to be a few people that get their tax bill coming in this year for their property taxes. And if they're not, um, if they're not like... Like in our area, if they you get a tax bill, property tax bill, they you, they can't raise it X amount percentage per year. But some areas are not like that. So you may if your house was worth one hundred and fifty thousand, and then now it's worth three hundred thousand, your property tax bill that's coming up is going to be extremely high. Some people aren't going to be able to afford that. So I think that we're going to be seeing a um, a shift. I think there's going, definitely going to be a shift, but it's not going to cause a crash per se. But I definitely def, definitely think there's going to be a leveling off for the next two quarters. And we're going to see what the effects of those the next two quarters are into the third quarter. Rue is definitely Glinda. Yeah, the good witch, the good witch. <laughs> if anybody doesn't know the Rue is, I used to be, my channel used to be your real estate whisperer. So if you take the initials, it's Rue. <laughs> So that, those, that's how you know that somebody's been a long time subscriber when they know that. <laughs> Steve C says, question, how do you start, uh, how do we, 
how do we start it back up? Lumber, shipping, homes, jobs, COVID still around. How do we start it? How do we get started back up? Um, here's the thing where it's going to take some time because we, we have a, we have a, um, we still have a problem and we've had a problem with uh, supplies coming into the country and it's nothing new. I know it's like all over the news now and they're making it sound like this is horrible thing. And it, don't get me wrong. It is a horrible thing, but it's been a horrible thing for over a year. You know, thank you for the $10 super sticker, Stacy. I appreciate you. What is your opinion? When do you think things are going to be like back to normal? And when it comes to building I, homes, I don't know. I wish I knew it. And then you hit it right on the head. It's all about the um, distribution and, you know, there's still, I read an article the other day, there's like a hundred ships out in the LA Harbor, just parked out there and nothing can it's be been like that. Oh, I know. And it it's just, been like that for over a year. So they like getting more and more. And I don't, I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know enough about the logistics of all of that and how quickly they can unload all those boats and get back to normal, but that's what it's going to take. Third quarter, I bet. I bet the 2022 third quarter, I bet we start seeing everything kind of because everybody's going to get bored with all this, you know, like we're, we're kind of creatures of like, we get bored with stuff. And when things don't really go our way, then we really mm -hmm. like, okay, we'll take care of it. And then all of a sudden the, like, it all gets done in like a, like a two week period of like, Oh, yep. The, sh the ships are all cleared up. It's all done, mm -hmm. but we're not bored with it yet enough. <laughs> but I, I think everything will be, um, back to like regular stuff by the third quarter of 2022 my opinion my opinion no you're probably right because that would be right before the next midterm election and they're gonna all make stuff happen oh you know it's amazing what happens when you when the you know your butts to the fire right <laughs> things yep. amazingly get done who knew i'm kind of like that though i i do my videos at the last minute i'm like this comes out on tuesday and i'm on tuesday morning like uploading I it know. I, I need to i would love <laughs> I, those guys that I see on our on our sites that we're on together that oh I've got ten in the can <laughs> like oh, that'd be nice yeah they don't have any views <laughs> either just saying <laughs> <laughs> all right well, do we have any more questions that I need to follow up on Eddie yeah we have another TikTok we want to share with you so this one's really interesting about uh, prefab homes so Eddie's going to be pulling that up for you I don't know if you guys can hear him in the background screaming <laughs> can you hear him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Oh, here it goes. Two of learning for my. She said, "Canada." Mistakes of buying a money pit piece of land in British Columbia, Canada. Um, to recap, I bought this land for 125k. I bought a prefab home for 34,000. Um, it's we're four years in, 500 grand in, and it's still not done. So let's learn from my mistakes. I'm going to try and do this all in one, so it's not a million different parts. Mistake number one, this property was on the market for, I think, almost over a year. Red flag number one. If it's on the market for that long, it's probably for a reason. In BC, where I live, properties were not, like, that sort of standard. So, yep, stupid me. Um, <laughs> mistake number three. So, my builder was like, yep, you go ahead, buy the prefab. It'll fit over there where the shed was. Um Purchased the prefab, $34,000 for all the material, all the lockup material, 50 grand total with all the shipping costs. It had to get shipped via a big transport truck. Um, yep, it could not fit over there because it was determined through the geotech assessment that if we wanted to build on that end of the property, we would have to go up this like hill mountain thing and spend possibly hundreds of thousands of dollars putting in a fence so that no rock falls there. So we could have gone up there, spent all the money and determined there was no rock to put a fence in. So it could have been just a complete gamble. Put, put, put push so pause, Eddie. We move the location of where the house is. Uh, there he is. Okay. So she kind of talks slow and it's driving me crazy. So <laughs> the thing is, is that her real estate agent was obviously not experienced in land. She should have told a real estate agent her intent for that piece of land before they bought it. She probably did. They should have had that report done before she signed anything, anything 
to purchase that house, that, that house to put on that piece of land. Cause she would have known that ahead of time. If she had worked with a real estate agent that was proficient in land, she would have never had this issue in the first place. And she says that in several videos. So I just want to, that's a pretty scary thing in the long run. It's now been, she bought this. She thought it was going to only take her a year to get it all put together. It's now four years. She's now five over $500,000 in, and she still doesn't have a home. She's still waiting for this house to be finished. So just, just think about that. Do you have any land horror stories there, Will? Well, it's funny that that gal, she's in British Columbia, which is straight North of me here. And, uh, so same type of ground. And, and we run into that all the time where, you know, I warn people and, and the thing you have to do is, you know, do those studies and figure out if you can build what you want to build, especially if you're on the side of a hill like she was. And yeah, I mean, she was right. Red flag number one is why has this been sitting here on the market for so long? That's probably <laughs> why. <laughs> Thank you, Savage Scientist, for the $5 super chat. I appreciate it. He's a Louisiana native. But that goes back to the point that like another, um, somebody had said, why are the state laws different? Why do you guys have to have a different state law? Because the terrain itself in every state is going to be completely different. The reports that you would need for here for land to purchase to make sure that you would be able to, you know, build on that piece of property are going to be completely different than the, the reports that you would need for where Will lives. I mean, we, you know, we have to get engineering reports from the Army Corps of Engineers to make sure it's not in a flood air area. And not only that, you know, make sure it's, there's no wetlands. And sometimes it, like one, only one piece or corner is considered wetlands property. And if you were deciding to put your house there, part of that would be in the wetlands. And then you'd have to do like, there's all these things you have to do here that would not even be a thing where Will lives. And so that's why the laws are different. And that's why every real estate transaction in every state is going to be completely different. But I can tell you from experience, every real estate transaction I've ever experienced is always completely different from the one that I've done the previous. I mean, I've never had one that was identical, never, not once. Isn't isn't your entire state considered wetlands? Uh, the half of it. Like if you go, like, I think, I think we're like more than one third of us is under sea level. I think one, one third of the state is under sea level. Probably not a lot of basements there. None. Not, no, I've never, I have, there's no state, there's no basements in the South. If you go to Georgia, there is, I think Tennessee has them. <clears throat> we don't have them over here. Eddie, you going to pull up a question for me? No. Deborah Wal Water says, uh, what state's areas are noted to have termites? You know, like anywhere that's below the, <laughs> the South, you know, anywhere that doesn't have a permafrost, you're going to have more termites. Uh, look, see exactly what I said. Whoop. Look at me. I'm so smart. Sometimes I'm just so smart. So yeah, these are going to be your highest areas. Yeah, you know, there in Louisiana we have a saying about termites. There's two kinds of houses. Ones that uh, there's the houses that have termites and the ones that are going to get them. You know? <laughs> so you like it's impossible to say that you're not going to get termites at some point. But um, just always you can get a um, a termite contract where they come out and they and they put um, more like termite bait around your house in these little tubes. Um, you know, and then they spray the the um, slabs before the house is even erected with a, a termite um, shield type thing. And then they come back and they spray it again after the house is constructed. And then they put those little tubes down so that way they can trap your termites. And then they come out here and inspect, inspect it every year and put down new, new bait. If you notice the map, we have no termites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but do you have like dry rot and do you have other wood destroying insects that could affect a home? Um, not, I mean, yeah, the rot part, yeah, um, mm -hmm. but not, we don't have termites. So I think our biggest like natural enemy or occurring thing that happens here is the radon. Um, and I've we don't have radon. The, what's that? We do not have any radon oh, here. You're in underwater. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah, we have it from all the rock and, you know, it's, there's a reason it's called the Rocky Mountains. So we, when we do an inspection, we always tell people to get a radon test and see if, you know, the level it comes in at and if it needs to be mitigated, it, then it, and we do it. How much of uh, Louisiana is below sea level? Thank you, Eddie. The highest point in Louisiana is 
Driscoll Mountain. I didn't even know we had a mountain, which is the altitude of 535 feet uh, above sea level. It can be considered a hill <laughs> because Driscoll got its shape through uh, an uh, atrophy. I was going to say mountain should be in quotes. <laughs> yeah, mountain. It's, it's, they, they said hill. <laughs> the, uh, Louisiana's lowest point is in the largest city of New Orleans, which is eight feet beneath sea level. Louisiana has an average of 100 feet above sea level, a uh, level while the, its elevation is below sea level, about one to two feet, with some parts uh, of the up, uptown being approximately six meters above the base of the river statistics of, on the elevation confirm that it's 51% of the earth's surface is connected in developing parts of new Orleans, St. Bernard parish and Jefferson lies above sea level. Well, 49% is beneath sea level in areas in similar with similar depths. Learn something new about L Louisiana. Yeah. We flood, we flood all the time. I was looking up the highest point in Montana is 12,800 feet. So it's a little higher than your mountain. Yeah. My, our, our hill, our 535 yeah. feet. What the heck? I mean, why did they even write an article about it? It's so embarrassing. Yeah. Do you fly fish? Do you fly fish? Well, um, I have, I don't do it regularly, but, um, uh, so I, yeah, sort of, <laughs> I, I, I do it occasionally. I'm not, I'm not a big time fly fisherman if that's what you're asking. Oh, I, I've watched it in a movie. And I thought it's one of the coolest things I've ever seen. You know, they take the little. Yeah, if I was to buy a house, I would buy it on a lake where I could watch people do that fly fishing. I'm not going to do it, but I'd like to watch it. Usually on the rivers here. <laughs> Though I will say what the coolest thing about living in colder climates, because I, I don't know if you know this, but I'm originally from Massachusetts. There's nothing that is outside that like other than bears, you know, you can see them coming for your mountain lions. They're coming for you. But like, the, the little insects aren't going to kill you. <laughs> like when you move to the South, every insect you see that like, Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? It's probably going to kill you. <laughs> just, <laughs> just know that we have these things called um, velvet ants. They're like, and they're, they're beautiful. I like, I caught one and somebody's like, they call those cow killers. They're, they're like, they'll, or bullet ants. They'll, they're literally feel like fire is running through your whole entire body. And it's a wasp that looks like an ant and it's velvety. It's super pretty, but yeah, you know, everything here, will, all the insects will kill you here. Yeah. Living up north, that won't happen. <laughs> Central Bank has uh, has an act where the most debt society is the U.S. in U.S. history, coupled with inflation, stagnant middle class wages. What would be the tipping point for the reset? Ooh, that's the that's the million dollar question right there. I don't know. Like, um, you know, they they kind of made a big stink a couple of weeks ago about um, this Chinese bank that was kind of going through the same thing. Like think like Goldman Sachs during the 2007 collapse. Um, they were like, oh, this is going to cause a ripple effect through the whole entire, you know, all the real estate markets. Well, that was just the top story for that moment. And no one's ever talking about it right now because China's not going to let their largest bank in their country fail. Just like we wouldn't let our largest banks fail here. Not only that, uh, some other big investment firms, including BlackRock, decided to dump some money into it so they didn't fail. So, you know, who knows? We, we'll, we'll never know exactly what will be the Great Reset if, the, if it will happen. You know, I, I don't know. It's kind of like, you know, you're a grandma sitting on the rocking por porch and saying, it's end of days. It's end of days. I've been hearing that since the day I've been born. And yep, never. <laughs> at some point, at some point, someone's going to be right. But <laughs> <laughs> on that one, I don't know when. <laughs> All right, here we go. Eddie's going to throw up something else. I, I just found a really nice comment. I'm going to I'm going to put this comment up here real quick, Eddie. You are my favorite YouTube real estate agent. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate your prog uh, uh, your progressive and humane views. It sets you apart. And it's one of the main reasons you're my favorite. Thank you, Anna. I do have a compassionate heart. Will does too. I met Will. I actually met Will uh, in, in LA face to face, like real life. And, um, there he, he was kind of quiet in the corner. I'm like, Hey, Mr. Will, you know, and then we got all, uh, around and it was great because we were the oldest ones there. All the other YouTubers <laughs> around us were like these young, like, you know, twenties, you know, thirties. Oh. And here we are in our fifties plus, you know, <laughs> we're like, and here, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know what, well, we're doing this. We're making this, this happen. And we, I think we come, I think what happens is that we come from a good place and we're genuinely trying to help people. 
Um, you know what? And speaking of genuinely trying to help people, if you guys are looking for a real estate agent in your area, um, on my website, you can go to my website. It's christinasmallhorn.com. You can fill out that form. It says, ask for a referral. And I refer to a real estate agent in my area or outside your area and anywhere you want to find, because I'm, I'm connected with lots of real estate agents throughout the country. PR has a question. Uh, question. We love you as you are. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> that was a good question that was a good question you know we do we love you well it looks like uh we were having a slow uh uh halloween week and i i can understand that people are trying to get their kids ready and um if people want to get a hold of you how can they get a hold of you here well i would love it if you would uh check out our channel it's called living in montana um all my information is on there all my contact info and um a little plug, I'm actually doing a live video on there uh, at five o'clock mountain time today. So if you want to hear more about Montana, uh, Hillary, my partner and I, um, because my wife hates to be on camera. So <laughs> we got another gal to help us out and she's agreed to be on camera more. So we do a live video every other week and we talk about all things Montana. Yeah. Yeah. You do. Will, this first video that he ever uploaded on, on YouTube turned into a viral hit. Well, it was my first one, but it was, it was close. It was close. <laughs> it was close. It was awesome. I was, I'm super proud of you. Uh, Savage Scientist says, uh, sounds like you were at Vid Summit. I actually spoke at Vid Summit, uh, Savage Scientist. I was a speaker on stage talking about YouTube. It was very exciting for me. Very exciting. Um, Will has an awesome channel. And um, I hope you guys would check out his live stream later this afternoon and make sure you hit the subscribe button. I hope everybody has a super safe Halloween and make sure you hit that smash schmoosh. We used to say it all the time. Schmoosh that like button. Schmoosh it. You schmoosh it. <laughs> Next week, we'll be back. We'll be back. I will not be painted and we'll be talking about more serious stuff. I just thought that we would have fun today and um, talk about some scary stuff that happens in the real estate market. And Will, I want to tell you, thank you so much. I appreciate you spending your Sunday afternoon with me as well as everybody in the chat. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday with me. Every, want to leave with any parting words, Will, and with the well, dance? <laughs> thanks for having me. It's always fun, and uh, hopefully we can do it again. All right, we will. We will. Thank you, everybody. Everybody dance. I need music. Do, do, do. Everybody dance. Eddie's going to end the stream right now. 